Hi guys, welcome to Medico Pharma Lectures. This is my first YouTube tutorial. So please excuse for any technical issue if you are going to face. And also provide your feedback so that I will try to improve it in my next upcoming videos. Today we are going to discuss the most basic and fundamental chapter of human anatomy and physiology which is the cell. As you all know that the cell is simplest and smallest unit of life which is capable of performing all the basic functions of life okay such as respiration reproduction excretion growth and many more okay all the life activities exhibited by living organism are the result of combined action of various cells such as kidney cells, neuronal cells, sensory cells, heart cells, GIT cells, muscle cells and many other cells. If you will see in an unicellular organism, a single cell can perform all the life activities, right? That's the reason the cell is considered as a structural and functional unit of life, right? Okay, so now we will define the cell, okay? So the cell can be defined as a unit of biological activity delimited by a selective permeable membrane and capable of self reproduction in a medium free of other living system right you can also define cell in various other ways okay now we will discuss little bit about selective permeability if you will see there there are certain substances which can enter the cell whereas others can't similarly certain substances within the cell can exit the cell whereas some of them are unable to do so okay this type of permeability is called as selective permeability where cell membrane selectively allow certain substances to enter the cell or exit the cell okay right okay now we will discuss about classification of cells so cells can be classified based on various platform so basically cells are of two types okay one is plant cells and animal cells we are not going to discuss much about plant cells okay based on evolution cells can be classified into two groups okay so first one is prokaryotic cells or prokaryotes and second one is eukaryotic or eukaryotic cells okay so you, you are seeing uh, a symmetric diagram of prokaryotic cells which have genetic material but no nucleus okay so here genetic material is found in the form of naked dna without histone protein and they lies freely in the cytoplasm right okay moreover the prokaryotic cells do not have important membrane enclosed cell organelles okay such as mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus lysosome etc as for example bacteria and cyanobacteria now we are drawing uh, a symmetric diagram of eukaryotic cells which are definitely well developed than prokaryotic cells with 
various organelles right okay so this is nucleus these are membrane bounded organelles like endoplasmic reticulum lysosome mitochondria and so on okay so eukaryotic cells which have highly advanced and well organized nucleus and also have large number of distinctive membrane enclosed organelles like mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus etc okay now we will discuss about a structure of a cell okay so basically we are seeing a schematic diagram of eukaryotic cell here if you will see the cell is enclosed or delimited by selective permeable membrane within which a jelly like substance with both minute and large dispersed particle and organelles is, is filled and is called as cytoplasm right there is a centrally located nucleus with chromatin and nucleolus enclosed within nuclear membrane right we will discuss uh, them in details in next upcoming videos okay so you can also see a well organized tubular network following nuclear outer membrane called endoplasmic reticulum right okay so if you see certain part of endoplasmic reticulum is covered by a granular shaped structures okay and appears rough hence it is called as rough endoplasmic reticulum or granular endoplasmic reticulum right okay so if you will see there are certain part of uh, endoplasmic reticulum which is not covered by ribosomes and they are called a smooth endoplasmic reticulum or a granular endoplasmic reticulum okay so there are certain ribosomes which are freely dispersed in cytoplasm and hence they are called free ribosomes similarly those ribosomes which are bound to endoplasmic reticulum are called as attached ribosomes right if you will see there is an another tubular structure similar to endoplasmic reticulum called golgi apparatus or golgi complex right apart from that cell also have mitochondria lysosome peroxisome transport vesicles which come out from endoplasmic reticulum and secretory vesicles which come out from golgi apparatus coming to another structure which have tubular or filamentous structure working as a cytoskeleton and hence helping cell to maintain a desired shape and are called as microtubules and microfilaments this is a lysosome okay we have forgotten to name it this is a peroxisome okay these are microtubules and microfilaments okay you can also see hair or thread like structures called cilia and flagella which are not seen in all the cells okay okay we have missed mitochondria also and there will be some starch granules also in the cell okay now we will discuss about composition of cell okay as you all know that the various substances that make up the cell are collectively called as protoplasm right okay so this protoplasm protoplasm is composed of water which accounts for 70 to 80% except in fat cells okay right now the second composition is ions so ions may be major means in large quantity and in less quantity that is minor ions okay so example for major ions is potassium magnesium phosphate sulfate and bicarbonates so these are the major ions which is present in the cell there are certain minor ions like sodium chloride and calcium okay uh, 
so you know what these uh, ions do so this provides inorganic chemicals to the cell for mainly two important function one is cellular reaction which is always going on and cellular control mechanism such as impulse conduction okay okay now the third one is proteins which accounts for 10 to 20 percent of total cells which may be a structural protein or functional protein so a structural proteins are in the form of filaments okay and functional protein may be tubular globular form okay so proteins which are in filamentous form will provide cytoskeleton to the cell okay whereas the proteins in tubular and globular forms are used as enzymes hormones and certain neurotransmitters okay these functional proteins will regulate various metabolic reactions which is occurring in the cell okay now the next one is lipids which contributes 2% of total cell mass the important lipids are phospholipids and cholesterol and are used to form the cellular membrane and intracellular membrane barriers that separate the different cell compartment okay now the last one is carbohydrates which have less structural function except as a part of glycoprotein molecules okay they are mainly used for nutritional purpose okay with this uh, we have come to the end of the lecture the next upcoming lecture will be on uh, cell organelles okay thank you thank you very much for watching us